Okay, so in this video, what I wanted to do was go into a little bit more detail about the plane effector. Now, I've talked about it and used it in some other videos, but I wanted to do a standalone video that goes into as much deals, detail as possible, since if you understand the plane effector, uh, well, then you will have a very good understanding, good basis for learning and understanding the other effectors. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so all I have here is a cloner with a cube in it. And the only thing I changed with the cube is to turn on fillet. Um, and other than that, I just set the count here to 15 and 15. Now, when it comes to applying the plane effector, you actually have two ways of doing this. Uh, now we can get this plane effector from here and you can create a plane effector, then select your MoGraph object and drag it into the effector list. Okay, the other way you can apply an effector is by having your MoGraph object selected like the cloner and then creating one and that will automatically apply it in our effector list there. So the plane effector is our most basic effector for adding and creating MoGraph animation. Now, if you understand the plane effector, then a lot of these other ones like the random effector, maybe even the shader, um, formula, push apart, uh, step, even time all make a lot more sense. Okay. Now with these effectors, they typically have a special way of changing the position, scale, rotation, or color. Formula is mathematical formula. Sound is sound. Step is incrementally um, step or using a graph. Shader is, you know, an image animation or texture. Random is a noise pattern, that type of thing. So plane really is just we are going to use a field in order to change the position, scale, rotation, or color. Now that is very powerful because fields themselves are quite powerful. And you can even use, say, a random field, a sound field, or a shader field inside of a plane effector. And more times than not, I like to use the field version of something versus the effector version of something. So um, instead of using the random effector, I might just use the random field. Instead of using the sound effector, I'm going to use the sound field. Okay, and that's because fields are a little bit newer. And uh, in some cases, like the random field, you actually have more options in it, things for like looping uh, and whatnot, when you use the field version of it versus the effector version of it. So in our plane effector, um, we have the effector tab where you can adjust the strength of it. You can create a selection and apply um, an effector only to a specific selection of cubes. Um, and you have the minimum and maximum. So it can be a minimum of zero, maximum of 100%. Okay. Uh, now we could make that go all the way to 100, negative 100, but that won't really matter for our purposes right now. The parameter tab is where you tell the effector what you want it to do to, in this case, our cloner. Okay, ignoring the transform mode and uh, transform space since we really don't use those too much. Uh, you can see we can change the position, X, Y, and Z axis, rotation, hitting pitch bank axis or scale, um, X, Y, Z or uniform scale, uh, however we want. Now, adjusting these values right now, whether it's position, whether it's rotation, okay, even scale is going to apply the effector the exact same amount. And that is not terribly interesting. That's not something, uh, you know, we need an effector for or that allows us to create interesting animation. So um, that's not really the key here. The key is when we decide to change the strength of this effector and how it gets applied to our cloner. And that is what we use fields for, which I'll get to here very soon. Okay. Um, I will simplify this though, just for our purposes right now. Um, I think, yeah, I'll just do position and maybe just a little bit on the Z axis. So, uh, scratch that Y axis. Do like 250. Okay. So once again, nothing terribly interesting. The color mode set the fields color. We don't have a field, so we don't see any colors here. Um, and then this other section, uh, honestly, we don't need to do worry too much about this if we're just using a plane effector though, um, the modify clone and uh, the visibility do creep up from time to time. And, and particularly that visibility option is really um, 
something you can find with the, where did it go? The hide selected uh, effector here, essentially. It's a plain effector set up to hide whatever you um, want. And you would have to make a MoGraph selection first, and then you can go ahead and hide it. Um, so that is not something I've run into or use all that often. Um, and then we can also use uh, effectors as deformers. Now, plain effector, probably not something you would do this for. Um, but if this was, say, a random effector, I could have it randomize the position of all the points on an object. Okay. And then fields. So fields, big part of the plane effector, allows us to create more interesting um, movement, animation, and control how our plane effector gets applied. Now, um, I do have a, a video already about the remapping section, so I'm not going to go into a lot of depth with that. Um, but I will spend a little bit of time talking about fields and working with them here. So I like to start with a linear field since it is our simplest field. And if you can understand the plane effector in the linear field, you will then have a much better chance of understanding the other uh, fields and effectors. Little trick, if you want to scale up your field, you can't really do it just by scaling it normally. Okay, all that's really doing is in your field tab is just adjusting the length. Instead, what you want to do is switch to object mode, and then you can scale this up. So our field now is controlling the strength. It's not what I wanted. The strength of our plane effector and how it gets applied. Okay, white, 0% strength. Blue, 100% strength. And honestly, that's almost a little bit opposite of kind of what you might expect. So I'm going to rotate this 180, and then, you know, we can see this. But it just depends. What you're trying to achieve okay so 100 percent to zero is what we are getting now as we move this left to right and when it comes to animation we typically animate the field and not really anything in the effector um you could perhaps animate the strength maybe even the maximum and minimum okay depending on the effector and what you have going on but for the most part it's the field and usually, at least with a linear field, it's the position of it. Okay, some other ones like a spherical field, sometimes the length or size is what you would animate. You know, random effector, I'm sorry, a random field, you know, maybe some stuff in there. But for a linear field, just the position of it. Now, the remapping section is something I've already talked about. Really, what we are seeing here is our field gradually apply the effector. So 0% strength, 100% strength. And this is kind of the interpolation or how it gets applied along that. If you switch the contour mode here to something like um, uh, quadratic, you can now adjust the shape of that interpolation. And that affects the animation very much like uh, adjusting the interpolation of keyframes. Okay. And a maximum, another interesting one is invert. So if it's doing the opposite of what you want, then invert is definitely the way to go. So now it's getting applied as I move this from left to right. In the color remap, uh, you can choose a color. Okay, it does choose one at random. You can also choose a gradient. And I think the gradient's a great way to visualize the strength of this effector where, um, like I said, uh, to the left here, 100% strength. To the right of our field, 0% strength. Okay, and we can see it gradually being applied as we move this around, okay? Now, I do think in the grand scheme of things, this color right here works plenty fine. Um, and then direction, if you did want to, um, you know, change the orientation or things like that. Okay, actually, orientation isn't in here. I'll be honest, I, hmm, I'm not sure what this is doing at the moment. I'll have to look into that. Uh, what else do we have here? So I mentioned scale, right? Uniform scale, if you want to make something disappear. Something that I think confuses a lot of people is they're just learning effectors and fields is these values here are offset from the original values of the cube. So for instance, I'm not saying move the cubes to 250 uh, centimeters on the y-axis. I'm saying move them 250 centimeters from where they're from, right? So I'm not saying this value needs to be 250. I'm saying um, move them 250 from wherever they're at here. And Really, the coordinate tab, I'm speaking of each individual clone in, that, in this case. OK, 
Okay. Now that's the general idea, but that's where, where I think it can be a bit more confusing when we talk about scale. The typical scale value on an object is one. So when you go into an effector and tell it to set its scale to negative one, you're essentially canceling those values out. One plus minus one equals zero. So that's why things are now disappearing. I think that can be a little bit hard. So keep in mind, all these values are relative. Okay, so that is where that part uh, comes in handy, comes into play, and why you want to, uh, for the most part, keep it that way. Okay, lastly, in our fields tab here, okay, a couple of things I want to point out, um, since this is a part of the effector itself, you can have multiple effectors. Each effector, you will have the ability to turn on and off um, its ability to affect properties or parameters there. Okay. You can also turn on and off the color. This color does not come through if you have a material on, uh, depending on your renderer. Uh, there are different ways to set it up. I do have a video about that. We have different blending modes for when you are mixing and working with multiple um, uh, fields here. I don't plan on going through all of these. A lot of these are just math based. That is another place where I think um, having the color here be this gradient, I think makes a little bit more sense because you can think of, you know, black is zero, white is one. And then when you start working with those values with different fields, you can, you know, I think visualize a little bit easier. What happens when we subtract one field from another, multiply, um, you know, one field from another, add them, things like that. Since all we're working with is zero, I'm sorry, one, zero, and then obviously some values in between. I think that does help kind of understand that a little bit more. And then lastly, we have opacity. We do have other types of field layers we can create. Uh, these field layers are really just different um, things we can use as a field. Uh, now, whether that is a MoGraph object, a particle object, point object, you know, you can create an object, any object really, or at least all the ones I've tried, uh, and drag it directly in here and work with it as a field. You don't have quite as many options, uh, depending on the type of object object you bring in. That's really what this is saying, okay, at least for the first part here. And then just some other options and things we can work with. Modifier layers, these are very much like adjustment layers, the delay being kind of my favorite. I have a whole video on that. But you'll see between the field objects, the uh, field layers, modifier layers, you know, um, quite a few things here. In fact, you'll see even some overlap. So, um, uh, oh, interesting. I thought the step, there was a step field, but it turns out it's actually here. Okay. Just like um, here we have formula, whereas I would have thought we would have found it here is, well, no, it is there. So yeah, there is a bit of overlap here. And then lastly, for really getting crazy, um, you can add a mask, you can group these fields together and go as you know crazy as you want. Then lastly, uh, we have this clamping, this value clamping. And I like to show that because it can make a big difference. So I'll just animate this really quick. Just going, say, cross. There we go. Took a few tries there, but we got it. All right. So we have our animation. Actually, I'm going to want that inverted. So invert it. And I'm going to add that delay. Okay. In my delay, I'm also going to turn off that color. That's getting quite annoying at this point. Um, I'm going to switch the mode to spring here. And then you'll kind of understand, hopefully, what's, what's happening. So notice with the spring, right? It's only kind of scaling back the way it came. It's not scaling or, or moving down or anything. And that's because we're clamping the values. Okay. Notice when we unclamp it, it now can kind of move further down. It's a little bit freer and you get a much more natural motion with the delay. And so that value clamping, you know, if you're pulling your hair out and you can't figure out why something isn't working the way you expect, it might just be that value clamping. So that will do it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any, uh, if you want to see anything else and take care.